Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Griffin here. And I wanna first and foremost wish everyone watching this a really happy new year. Funny enough, 2020's first video of the year went a little bit like this. A super happy new year. I hope 2020 brings a lot of joy, great moments, and overall you're able to achieve all the goals that you're striving for in this new year. And while I think it's now safe to say that that intro did not age all too well, but let's stay positive here and hope that 2020 brings us our best year yet. Now, in terms of the market environment that we're currently riding through, I think it's safe to say that there are quite a few unknowns and quite a bit of uncertainty regarding what to expect in the market over the course of 2021. Equity markets are once again trading at all-time highs. Following pretty much the quickest recession and rebound in history, the Federal Reserve has more money out in circulation than ever. We're in the process of a change in American governments, interest rates are rock bottom, and the principles of investing are seemingly unclear for a lot of investors who just just got into the market over the past year. There's also been a massive inflow of cash and new investors into the stock market since March 2020. So while it's been extremely lucrative to pick and choose individual growth stocks over the course of last year, it's also really important to remember as investors here that proper portfolio construction and asset allocation is critical to maintain a proper strategy moving forward for your needs as an investor, especially during a volatile market environment such as what we're living through right now. So as always here, I do recommend first building out that solid base of core exchange trade funds that are going to allow your portfolio to appreciate at a more consistent pace over the course of your investment horizon, especially if you're a younger investor and you have years ahead of you to ride out certain market corrections. As we can see from this chart right here that showcases the price to earnings ratio of the S&P 500, we're approaching early 2000s levels. And while history doesn't inherently mean that things will repeat, this is just something to be mindful of as an investor in today's market environment. But regardless of indicators or what pretty much anyone says, no one really knows exactly when there's going to be a market correction and how severe it will be. So with all that said, I do still recommend building out that solid base with some core ETFs such as an S&P 500 ETF, NASDAQ 100, and even some ARK Invest Exchange Trade Funds. Those are really going to be some more solid picks moving forward for the overall growth of your portfolio. But today's video is going to focus on five five other ETFs that you could definitely consider adding to your watch list or even your portfolio for various different reasons that we're going to be discussing today. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up, really helps the channel out. And if you're a newer investor and you want to learn everything there is to know about stock market investing from scratch, make sure to check out the link down in the description to my all-encompassing investing course that goes over everything you need to know to analyze companies and funds and build a portfolio based on your needs as an investor. So with all that said, let's get right into the first exchange traded fund. All right, so the first ETF we're going to be speaking about today is the Schwab US Small Cap ETF, ticker symbol SCHA on the NYSE ARCA. This is a fund that primarily focuses on small cap American stocks. So as opposed to say a total US market fund that holds positions of all market caps or say the S&P 500 that holds only the top 500 largest companies in America, SCHA focuses on small cap stocks for for more of a narrow facet of the market that hasn't had as much attention in the past couple of years. In fact, even though historically speaking, large cap companies tend to show lower upside potential for appreciation year over year than say a small or medium cap stock, just based on the nature and sheer size of these companies, well this has actually been far from the truth over the past couple of years, especially in 2020. For example, this chart right here shows us the indexed year to date market returns as of November 2020 for the five largest stocks in the S&P 500 being Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, and Google, which was up 39% while the returns of the remaining 495 companies in the index was minus 1%. And keep in mind that all of these top five companies are extremely large cap. With that said though, small cap stocks do tend to outperform large cap companies during periods of economic turbulence and during the preliminary stages of a market market recovery, which hopefully this will prove to be true over the course of 2021 and beyond. And for this reason, the Schwab US small cap ETF could be a great option to keep in your portfolio for this year. 
This fund is a really easy way to expose yourself to over 1,800 small and medium cap stocks in the American market at a very inexpensive price. The ETF also trades for roughly $89 a share, has an expense ratio of only 0.04%, which you really can't get any lower than that, and the price to earnings ratio across the fund is 17.99, which compared to even the S&P 500 is relatively much cheaper. The net assets under management are just under 13 billion, making this a very large fund. And finally, the trailing 12 month dividend yield is 1.22%. Make sure to let me know down in the comments what you think of this first ETF and whether or not you believe that 2021 will be a better year for smaller cap positions. Moving on now to the second ETF that we'll be speaking about in today's video. This is the iShares Global Clean Energy ETF, ticker ICLN, which as the name would suggest, seeks to invest in clean energy companies that are involved in biofuels, ethanol, geothermal, hydroelectric, solar, and wind industries. But what's interesting about this fund is that it not only invests in companies that do produce this clean energy, but it also invests in companies that develop the technology and equipment that is needed to produce these forms of green energy. In 2020, the green energy sector as a whole performed extremely well as from a societal standpoint, we're really starting to shift our focus towards a higher consumption of these renewable energy sources. Now, Joe Biden is expected to be sworn in as the 46th president of the US on January 20th, and this will most likely mean a stronger focus on renewable energy, meaning that 2021 could once again prove to be a great year for the sector. I've shared my thoughts on the channel multiple times over the past couple of months as to why I believe the renewable energy sector will have been a great industry to have invested in over the next 10 years or so, and this really just solidifies my standpoint on this. In fact, one of the main elements that I like about the business model of most of these renewable energy companies is their contractually obligated purchase agreements, often up to even a decade. This means that as governments and corporations look to further consume clean energy, many of them have entered into agreements with these green energy producers to purchase a fixed amount of energy per year for up to or even surpassing a decade-long contract. So essentially what this means is that even if we do run into more economic turmoil, many of these renewable energy companies are going to be able to maintain at a minimum a certain amount of energy out the door, meaning a certain amount of revenues. ICLN currently trades for roughly $28 per share, has an expense ratio of 0.46%, $4.58 billion in assets under management, and holds 30 individual stocks. Now, even though this ETF is certainly more of an appreciation play, it does still offer a low dividend yield of 0.3%. Now, I personally do not hold a clean energy ETF, but I do hold a handful of clean energy stocks as I do expect this industry to really excel over the next decade. And by the way, another interesting ETF in this general space is the PBW ETF by Invesco that also invests in green energy stocks and even has some electric vehicle stocks. The third ETF that I think warrants some attention moving into 2020 here is the Vanguard Value ETF, ticker VTV, which focuses on, well, theoretically value stocks, or at least companies that are trading in a position of value relative to the general market. Remember that chart we looked at at the beginning of the video where the top five companies in the S&P 500 significantly outperformed the other 495 companies in that same index? Well, that chart still proves to be relevant in relation to value stocks because over the past couple of years, big tech has really replaced value stocks in regards to investor interest. But this has sort of left a gap of opportunity here where even though the overall general stock market is valued extremely high right now, mostly concentrated in specific industries like big tech, for example, well, there are still some more value oriented industries that are expected by Vanguard to produce higher returns over the coming years following an extended period of underperformance, even though this would pose a higher risk if as an investor, you were to try and pick and choose individual value stocks over say investors investing in a value stock fund. And this is where a fund like VTV comes in handy, where over 330 American large and mid cap stocks are grouped together based on a variety of value metrics like forward price to earnings, price to book, price to sales, and even price to dividend ratios. VTV currently trades for roughly $120 per share and has a rock bottom expense ratio of 0.04% and $94 billion in assets 
assets under management. The largest holdings of VTV include American staples like Berkshire Hathaway, Johnson & Johnson, Disney, and JP Morgan. And as you can see from this table, the highest concentration of stocks is in the consumer staples, financials, healthcare, and industrial sectors. Finally, the Vanguard Value ETF also offers investors a 2.56% dividend yield, which for a non-dividend focused fund is very nice. Moving on to the fourth ETF that I definitely think you should keep an eye on in 2021, we have the iShares US Medical Devices ETF, ticker IHI, which mainly focuses on companies that manufacture medical devices rather than say other facets of medicine that I've spoken about on the channel like biotech or even telemedicine. In fact, I also highly recommend the ARK G fund offered by ARK Invest, which is the Genomics Revolution ETF that you can check out right here if you're interested. All this to say though that medical device companies typically have more stability in their revenues and as the demand for medical equipment continues to increase following the pandemic, aging population, and just an overall increase in population, this type of fund should really excel. IHI has a management expense ratio of 0.43% and currently holds 65 stocks at the time of filming this video, with the largest being Abbott Laboratories, Thermo Fisher Scientific, and Medtronic. Now, even though I do think this stock will perform quite well over the coming years due to the nature of its holdings, a couple things to keep in mind here. First of all, the stock does trade above $300 per share, which doesn't really mean anything on a relative basis, but if you are a newer investor with limited capital, this can be a more expensive fund to start investing in. Another thing to keep in mind here for this fund is that the average price to earnings ratio is around 47x, which is on the higher end here and is definitely more of a orange to red flag for me. So when we think of the medical industry, typically what comes to mind, at least for me, is facets of the industry like big pharma, as well as now telemedicine, which has really taken investors by storm over the course of 2020. But this is another facet of the medical industry that if you don't necessarily have any exposure, this could also be a nice addition to the portfolio because I think it's gonna do very well over the coming years. And finally, the fifth and last ETF that we'll be speaking about today is significantly more of a gamble in that the assets under management for this fund are a lot lower than any of the other four that we spoke about, as well as the fact that the companies that are held within this fund are not nearly as established and the fund has limited operational history. The fund I'm speaking about is the Round Hill Sports Betting and iGaming ETF, ticker BETZ. Now let me make things clear right off the bat here that this is in no way an ETF that I would invest a high amount of capital into, especially if you're just starting out. Rather, this would be more of a fun secondary position where I may look to allocate a small portion of the portfolio once I already have a well-built solid portfolio with exchange traded funds and companies that I have a strong thesis on. The fund itself only has 207 million in assets under management, split across currently 38 companies from 14 different countries. In the United States, sports gambling still isn't fully accepted in all states, but more and more states are legalizing it, seeing the tax revenue potential like they always bring much come around with other vices like alcohol, tobacco, and even marijuana. Now since this is a relatively newer industry that most of you may not be familiar with, let's actually see what Round Hill has to say about this fund on their website. So the Round Hill Sports Betting and iGaming Index is the first index globally designed to track the performance of the sports betting and iGaming industries. And this index consists of a tiered weight portfolio of a globally listed companies who are actively involved in the sports betting and iGaming industry. So this classification includes companies that are gonna operate in-person and or online sports books, companies that operate online and internet gambling platforms, and finally, companies that provide infrastructure or technology to such companies. So this ends up including companies like Penn National Gaming, Flutter Entertainment, which actually owns PokerStars, and even DraftKings, along with other pretty interesting international gaming companies. Now, while most organized and professional sports ended up having either a truncated or even a downright canceled season in 2020, hopefully in 2021 and beyond, once a vaccine really starts getting rolled out, we're going to see an increase in sports betting again as a result of the sports actually being up and running. 
So yeah, definitely an interesting fund to say the least. It has a 0.75% expense ratio, which is much higher than the others on today's list. But if you're interested in exposure to betting and gambling, this could be an interesting option for 2021. That is definitely outside of your core holdings for your portfolio. This pretty well wraps it up for today's video, covering five exchange trade funds that you should definitely keep on your radar for your portfolio in 2021 that are outside of your core holdings that you should definitely be building out for your long-term investment strategy. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like. It really helps the channel out. And if you want to learn more about stock market investing, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button to be notified whenever I release new and upcoming content. And with that said, if you want to learn more in-depth and concrete information about how I analyze companies and read through balance sheets, income statements, and all of that jazz, make sure to check out the link down in the description to my full stock market investing course. Thanks a lot for watching today's video and I'll see you in the next one.